joining us today is Victoria Zambello, a senior on the women's soccer team. Um, I think it's looking at your bio, it's, it's actually sort of uh, simplistic to say, oh, you're a soccer senior. What, but what else do you do on campus? Because you look at the list and I, I would love to hear in your words, what else are you involved with on campus? Yeah, so I'm also the vice president for SAC, um, also the co-founder of TBC and also a peer facilitator. Um, and then I also am the executive editor, editor for the Defender this year, which I'm really excited about, um, as well as also one of the co-coordinators for her campus. Um, so I try to get a little more outside of athletics these last two years, uh, which has been really fun so far. Has that been sort of enriching to your experience? So you're not just walking away saying, oh, I, I played soccer, I was a student athlete, but also here's, here are other things I did. Totally. And one of the things I tried to really push on to my underclassmen this year um, was to like, get friends outside of your team too. Um, and I think being in these different groups, I've had a whole different perspective um, on really everything. And I think as well too, especially this year with COVID and my season not happening, um, it was really nice to know that I had different communities to rely on besides athletics um, and thinking to myself, oh, I don't have a season this year. Like, what am I? I kind of was like, oh, I'm also a journalist. Um, and I'm also doing these things. I volunteer and I do all this other stuff. I have friends outside of athletics. Um, so that made me feel a lot more stable. And I also was like, my perspective isn't just this one way um, road. So that was definitely way more mentioned to me and something that I try to encourage other people to do as well. That actually is, I'm happy you hit upon the identity piece. Cause I was gonna ask you with so many different things that you were involved with, do you have an identity like to yourself? What, what do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm a student athlete or no, I'm, I'm on SAC. I helped create TBC. I mean, does that help you a little <laughs> bit too when you sort of sit back and like, I'm not just one thing. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of hard, honestly, um, because I'll wake up and I also work at a financial services company. So I, you know, I'm a professional during that time. And then I all of a sudden go to class and I'm in the MGD labs um, and I, I'm a super passionate person. So I dive in 100% whatever I do. Um, and so it'd be really hard to like drag myself out of defender stuff um, or even just any of my classes and be like, okay, it's time to go to practice. Um, it's time to go be a captain, like work really hard during practice. And then once I finish practice, I'm like, okay, now it's time to be a leader with SAC and do this other stuff. So it's really, really cool. And there's a lot of different dimensions, I think, to myself. Um, but again, it can be really hard to like peel myself away um, and try to balance all those different types of things that I do. I'd love to talk a little about TBC and sort of give you an opportunity to educate folks about it. I, I know it's about sexual assault awareness um, and you're a relatively new group and you're one of three co-founders with Molly Nemus, uh, who's also a senior and Alyssa Brunig who graduated last year. But can you talk a little more about it and let folks know what you guys are all about? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so this was a group that formed actually Kathleen Welch, who is the Title IX coordinator um, came to one of our athlete orientations and was like, hey, we need a group around this. You know, we have Hope Weapons here, um, which is a mental health awareness group, but we're missing in this um, side of issues. And so like how as athletes can we step up and help? Um, and right away, I was like, this is definitely something I'm interested in. Um, and something I really loved about this group is immediately we said, we want this to be preventative and proactive. We don't want this just to be awareness. Um, we want the opportunity to educate our fellow athletes um, and hopefully one day really to the entire school as well. I think that's the larger goal at hand. Um, what is sexual assault? What is consent? Um, how can we help others? How can we open up the conversation around this? Because um, it's definitely a topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about, which given it's hard to talk about. Um, it's heavy. It's not something people want to talk about over dinner. Um, and it's not something on your team that you necessarily want to talk about as well. Um, so we really took initiative and had an entire training with Sarah Mel and trained our peer facilitators to be able to go into each athletic team and open up the conversation and facilitate it. Um, and we got really good feedback back. We were really happy. I actually heard one of the guys on one of the hockey teams be like, it hit different. Um, being able to see one of my teammates that took the time out of his Sunday, nine hours to sit through this training and then continue to take more time out of his week. Um, and that is extremely busy schedule to sit down with our team and talk about why it's important. Um, it hit a lot of different than just kind of seeing um, the normal regulations that we used to get where it was like the online, um, 
things that you just click through of like sexual assault awareness, you know? Um, and so I'm really grateful that we've gone this far. I'm excited to see where we're going next. And obviously I'll be graduating next year. So I'm really excited to see new leaders step up um, and hopefully continue with that momentum. How do you start the conversation with teams? Cause okay, you say, hey, let, let's talk to a team about it. Where does the conversation begin? Yeah, so usually within our first rotations, we kind of start with some humor. Um, people are really obviously awkward talking about it. Um, so I think during our facilitations, we usually would like compare consent um, and compare sex to like your given sport, um, which obviously is humorous and it's kind of weird. Um, but right away, people are like, oh, like this is a comfortable conversation. I feel like I can open up to this. Um, and from there, it's usually like an hour conversation. Um, and something that I usually say to the incoming class every year for soccer, I'll sit down with them and I'll say, hey, like you can come to me for anything. I'm never going to judge you. I always want this to be an open conversation. Um, and I think it's something to also recognize that this stuff does happen on our campus. It happens on every campus. It happens in the world. Um, and people are really afraid to be like, it happens, but it does. Um, and I think recognizing that right off the bat, especially to incoming freshmen, um, especially because I think the statistic is the first couple of months is like the red zone, especially within first years. Um, and it's really scary. So just recognizing right off the bat, if you can control the first years coming into the team and how they're approaching this, um, you can be able to start to change that culture. And I feel like it's already started to change. And I know you guys have done some awareness games, but are those, is that something you started hoping you would continue with other events? Is that something that for now you're only hoping to do at sporting events? What's the plan moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely weird with COVID this year, we'll say. I know we're having something called More Week. Um, and that was just one of our um, leaders for Hopkins here kind of reached out to Hopkins here at TBC and SAC and was like, hey, like, can we do one big awareness week this year? Obviously, we don't have games. Um, Who Happens Here usually has like a full week awareness week. And TBC being kind of like the baby of the group, um, we don't have anything necessarily solidified. We're just kind of going with it and seeing how it goes. So we were really happy to have more week and we actually have a specific day um, dedicated to educating yourself and we'll have a story walk throughout the threes actually. Um, it'll be everyone's day off from school, which will be great because more people will be able to come. Um, like what are the statistics around sexual assault? We're gonna have actually people um, send in stories and be able to post them so people can read them and really just reflect on them. Um, but we don't have a specific plan for awareness games in the future. I think it's always an awesome thing. Um, I know our, our soccer team absolutely loves to do it. And it's always awesome when you can play for a reason. Um, I remember playing for TBC last year and I was like, this means a lot to me. Um, and so it's just a whole different view on your game when you're able to do that. I, uh, in looking at your leadership board, uh, board, I don't know, but team, leadership team. Yeah. <laughs> you have about nine folks on your leadership team, all student athletes. And I, I'm struck by the fact that four of them are men. And I, not that men aren't affected by sexual assault, um, but I, I guess in your opinion, I mean, were you surprised that some men stepped up and wanted to be part of this? I don't know if I would say surprised. I would say they kind of needed a bit of an extra push. Um, and I think a lot of them really wanted to be involved but were a little more hesitant. Um, and I think some of that just comes from stereotypes of assuming that men haven't been sexually assaulted. Um, and some of that is just kind of the unfortunate, like unintended consequences of how people talk about sexual assault. Um, and so I was really, really excited when these guys came forward and like, yeah, we do want to help. Um, and I think that right there showed how powerful TBC could be. Um, it wasn't just a woman's thing. It wasn't just an athlete thing. It was all these people coming together and be like, we want to stop this. Um, so I don't know if I wouldn't necessarily say surprised, um, but it was really cool that that happened too. I, and, and even going back to my question, I already regret the way I put it because of course it's not just an <laughs> issue. Um, and I, yeah, the, I don't really love the way I just phrased that because you're right. It, it's a men and women affected by it, but um, I guess I would almost expect that if a group like that were to form, it would be women starting it. Um, so that's that's really all I was getting at there. Um, just to make that clear. Um, yes. 
Yes. Yeah, which anybody rewatching that, I hope they or rewatching this, I hope they don't think that was, <laughs> that was stupid, Josh. But um, I, uh, I, let's see, before you got here, I believe I was aware of your sister playing softball Merrimack. Yes. I, it, was, it was funny because I was looking through all of these things and thinking about the connections we have with, with Merrimack. With, I was in school with Judy Cronin, whose sister played soccer at Merrimack. Um, oh, they funny. played against each other. Uh, we have uh, Maddie Dobecki, who graduated a couple years mm -hmm. ago, field hockey player. Her sister played played field hockey at Merrimack. It, so I think that was really that's neither here nor there. But as you were going through high school and you saw you're such playing college sports, was there ever a point where you were thinking, well, you know, I, I like soccer, but I, I don't really know if I'm going to play in college? Did you see your sister as Wait, I, I can play college sports. There's there's something more I can do. My career doesn't end in high school. Yeah, it's interesting. I actually so I also played softball and I kind of chose going into high school between softball and soccer. Um, and I was like, I like softball a lot. I know I'm really good at it, but I love soccer. Um, and so that was the decision I made. Um, yeah, and I definitely saw her as a role model and was like, oh, this is something I can continue with. Um, and I always joke to my family, like she was such a natural talent. Um, she was a superstar in my family and worked her butt off. Um, and I was someone it came natural to, but I think with the sport of soccer, um, for me, it was a lot more of, I took my strength of leadership and um, hard work um, that made the difference for us. And I went to St. Mike's for that reason. Um, I was looking at Merrimack and I was like, yeah, I'll play here, probably not often. Um, and I recognize that. And I think self-awareness, especially in the recruiting process is super important. Um, and I leaned towards St. Mike's as someone that was a little more community oriented in my mind. Um, I knew I could go abroad. I knew that I could take on these leadership roles that I am now taking on um, while still playing the sport I love. Um, so it was definitely really awesome to be able to watch her through Merrimack um, and also look up to her a lot. And so as you get to your senior year, I mean, I, I'm sorry this is your senior year right now, honestly. <laughs> Um, as with the, you know, the class of 2020, the spring student athletes, you know, how have you helped, well, how, first off, how have you helped yourself, yourself stay focused on hopefully having a season come the spring semester? And how have you helped the rest of the team, uh, you know, first years in particular, how have you been a leader for this team as you've looked toward hopefully a season in the spring? I would be lying if I said it's been easy. Um, and something that like we'll talk about as captains is like, this is a really hard position. I wouldn't wish this position on anyone, honestly. Um, and especially too, like, obviously I'm going through it as a senior myself. Um, and so something I've been trying to do, I guess, better at is I'm someone that usually comes in with a huge amount, a lot of positivity, even when I'm not feeling it. Um, and I think during this time, it's also important to be like, you know what, some days I'm not feeling it. Um, some days I'm not really happy. Some days I've had really long days. And I think that as a leader, it's also really important to show that vulnerability, which is something I've struggled with in the past. Um, so I think recognizing that more and then also touching upon our seniors way more. Um, you know, Liz Valentini is my co-captain. I think that we've been trying to get feedback from our seniors a lot more um, because this is so unprecedented. Like we don't really know what's going on. Um, every day we get new news of what could possibly happen. Um, and I feel like this is the first week we what is the first week we started to be able to do 11 v 11 yesterday? Um, so we had like half field, which is great to be able to play with everyone. Um, and it definitely is motivating to know, okay, we'll have 11 v 11 soon. Like you feel that competitive aspect coming back. Um, but then I can sometimes just hear that competitive aspect and then get a little sad and be like, oh, I miss season, I miss game day. Um, so I think just looking forward to those 11 v 11 and trying to take advantage of the time we have. Um, in regards to first years, it's just really important to constantly check in on them. I think Liz and I have tried really hard to, and it, again, it's really difficult when you have 30 different things going on. Um, but I think even just like shooting a text over like how they're doing. Um, and again, we have no idea what's really going on with them. We've never experienced what they have. So I think hearing more from them and giving less advice this year um, is a different take I had to um, take on this year. Yeah. Do you think back to when you were first year and try to relive any of those experiences and think, well, gosh, 
I remember that awful day I had and, you know, no one else on the team really understood. And do you, do you sort of, do you have any of your own personal stories that you're able to think back to as you try to sort of help people along now that you're a senior? Absolutely. And I specifically remember like who would go up to me. Um, like I remember Emily Durrett, I was having a really tough day. Um, and as someone that is usually physically showing happiness when I'm not as much, it's really noticeable. Um, <laughs> pause, I'm negative on that one. But I remember specifically she had like called upon me, um, just texting and checking in on me after I was clearly having a rough practice. Um, and just overwhelmed. It's a lot of times you can just get really overwhelmed in practice. You have a really tough day and all of a sudden like it just hits you like a brick how hard your day was. And sometimes that just happens. Um, and there was even a girl on our team that, that so clearly was so similar to that happened to her the other day at practice. And I was like, I remember when Emily did this to me, like she just needs someone to check in with her. Like that's all it is. Um, just like a quick mental check in and then we can be fine. Um, so definitely I, I, I always think about that. And I was actually just talking to my coach yesterday of just obviously being your senior she kind of mentioned how it was interesting watching myself grow up and kind of how I started to voice myself more and I immediately was like it's our upperclassmen it's being able to be around Sarah Rooks, Sarah Williams, Emily Dura, Alex Matteo, Abby Pilon um, and hearing them voice themselves and being like "Ooh, I want to do that one day like I want to be a leader I want to be able to help my underclassmen um, so it's funny to kind of get nostalgic with it, especially like mid practice. I'll do it. <laughs> that's fun. Bringing up Abby Pilon. That's but yeah, that, great girl. <laughs> yeah, those three seniors right there, uh, all youngins. Um, is there anything in particular as you look back, you're, you're incredibly proud of that you've done, or, or the way you've grown, certain leadership positions you've taken on that you you never thought you would? I mean, TBC is a huge one. I never really expected myself to co-found that. Um, I always had an interest in like helping others and I definitely have a strong passion of helping others, but I never expected it would be in this way. Um, I never expected to have as much support from athletics as we did. Like I remember right when we started this, like there was no pushback. It was immediately like, yes, we're doing this. Um, and so that was definitely like just a huge surprise of me um, and definitely very grateful that I do it. And then I also never really expected myself to be executive editor for Defender. Mm -hmm. um, I came in as a journalism major and I always had like a dream of writing for the New York Times or being a lawyer, I was kind of between those two. Um, and then I came into college in the first two years, I was like, I don't wanna be a journalist, absolutely not. Um, that's not something I'm ever interested in. And then I took reporting for media with Professor Cleary and absolutely fell in love with it and was like, oh, like maybe this is something I could continue doing for the school. Um, and then just took on that role this year and I absolutely loved it and I thrive with it. And I love working with other people and hearing different perspectives. Um, so those would be my two roles that a little bit were surprised on. That's wonderful. As a, I went to school here as well, I'm in 04. So back when we were uh, journalism and mass communication, uh, J mm -hmm. JOMC. Um, oh, up. <laughs> so I, I respect the, I feel like I was the executive editor of the Defender too. I, I did stuff like there you go. <laughs> involved in you just I am I'm wondering what I, I know there's a difference but can you explain sort of the difference between the defender and her campus yeah I mean there are completely two differences I joined her campus I believe it was going into my sophomore year um and it's a female empowerment blog it's nationwide um each school has their own chapter and the writing for it's just a little different. Um, it's not as much journalism based, it's a little more blog based. Um, like for example, for the Defender, you always need to make sure you have a certain amount of sources. Um, our campus is more like, here's an experience I had and here's a reflection I took away and this is how I could help someone. Um, or like, here's five Netflix shows that I love to watch. And it's just a way to kind of have fun with it and connect with other people on campus. Um, and you also get the community aspect of her campus, right? Um, so those are like the completely two different things I would say. Um, but I always try to call upon people in the defender and be like, Hey, you straight for her campus and vice versa. Um, cause it's not, if you're not an MGD major, you don't always think of it, but really like so many people are awesome at writers. Awesome. They have amazing experiences, want to voice their opinions. Um, so I think giving people a platform to do so is just so beneficial to everyone else as well. It sounds like a captain knowing knowing her <laughs> strengths, who would work well, 
where. Um, so what's next? Um, because I don't remember if we talked about this already. Uh, have you as a social and MJD double major? Is that right? Um, I'm actually a social minor now, um, but I'm an MJD major. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really know what's next. Um, <laughs> I'm part time at a financial services company right now. Um, so I just work like 15 hours a week there and I would love the opportunity to continue working for that company if the time comes. Um, but my perspective has definitely changed of what happens after college. I used to always think, at least after my first internship, you know, when I graduate college, what I will do, what I will do is what I will do for the rest of my life. Um, and after my second internship, I was like, oh, I don't have to continue in the same path forever. Um, and so that was a huge change of mindset for me. And so now I'm just kind of, you know, looking to get a job, hoping to experience new things. I think I'll always kind of keep the love of being able to help people. Um, and certain companies, you know, have these opportunities within them. Some of them you have to go outside of your company. So kind of a ball in the air, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure you've seen his name in the building, Zaf Budovich, who's our uh, head athletic trainer for almost 40 years, a, a coach, a athletic director, et cetera. And one of the things he used to say was something about your first job isn't your last job, or, you know, it doesn't have to be your last job. Um, and just, I think for a anybody in college to hear that. Yeah. You don't think about that. You think I need a job. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you end up back to Boston, up in Vermont. Um, I would love to, I think Boston is always the goal for me. I just love that city. Um, but I would love to live kind of outside of mass for at least two years. My brother lived in Texas, uh, for two years. My sister lived in Jersey. Um, I just think it makes people grow, puts you outside of your comfort zone. So I love that opportunity. Um, and if that means a job just takes me there, I, like, I might as well. Um, I know I want to go back to grad school, possibly law school. Um, but again, I'm not rushing anything. I'm trying to take my time with it um, and just see where it goes in there. You could be the lawyer journalist after all. Yeah. <laughs> well, you definitely still have time before, before you have to worry about that. And yes. uh, certainly we're all hoping that you all have your season come the spring and everything just keeps moving forward. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Holding my breath for it. <laughs> yeah, I was too. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. It was great talking to you. Yeah, same, Victoria. Have a good day. You too.